This is a, a, a quick introduction to Messenger Library, which is a package for LabVIEW on the LabVIEW Tools Network, also available on the Lava Code Repository. And in fact, the latest version is usually in the Code Repository rather than the network. Uh, rather than go through a lot of detailed examples, I'm just going to show what I would actually do in the start of a project and just go through some of the features. Uh, so we start off with an empty project and an empty blank diagram. And uh, so we're going to start from scratch. Uh, the only thing I've done here is that the, the uh, new VI have enabled automatic error handling, so we won't be doing any uh, error wires for this demonstration. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, say I'm starting a project and I want to interfere, interface with hardware. Uh, I want to have asynchronous processes going on, one piece for a piece of hardware. So to make that, uh, rather than starting with a blank diagram, I want to start with a template. And to do that, installed with Messenger Library, down under Messenger Library, there are two options, Actor Manager, which we'll go through later, and Create Actor from Template. This gives a list of possible templates to use. The DEV one is the one I actually use. Uh, it comes with the standard template, which is re-entrant, so you can have multiple copies. Uh, the non-re-entrant version, where you only have one copy, uh, it's easy to switch between the two. Uh, so we're going to pick the non-re-entrant version. Uh, it should be slightly easier to uh, uh, to uh, debug. So we give it a name. We want it my actor. I'm going to folder. Okay, save. Wait for it to script. And what it'll do is it'll script a copy of the template and add it to our project. So you should probably always do this from an open project. There it is. Right, now if we look at our project, we've added my actor class. My actor class contains only one method, and that's the only method you have to worry about, called uh, in this case actor nr for actor non-reentrant. Uh, this Although it's a class, don't be afraid of it because uh, it actually doesn't contain any data and you never have to have any data to it. You never have to have any methods. It's just got one method that is dynamic dispatch uh, so that it can inherit the ability to be an actor. So if you look at the block diagram, uh, what we see is a message handling loop. Uh, the startup code here, which again is hidden in the sub-VI, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, the actor identity, that's the dynamic dispatch thing. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, what we have is a message handling loop and uh, with an event structure in front for, for events. The only event currently is messages that it can receive from external. A uh, set of messages, a lot of default messages. There's an initialized message, which is the first thing that happens. And then after the event structure, you, have, you can optionally, in uh, the style of a JKI state machine, give it things to do that are executed as part of the uh, handling the event. So first the event is handled here, then any other follow on actions are followed over here. And the last action followed, which is the blank case uh, in the event structure, is always the error handling. So basically you have an event, handle the event here, any following actions, then error handling, and that's it. So it's just a straight message handling loop. Uh, if you look at this template, although it's in a class, we can actually run it by itself. Uh, it doesn't actually do anything, but it will start and it will shut down. Uh, so if we want to add some kind of feature to, uh, what should we do? Uh, normally we'd have some running some kind of hardware, but I'm just going to put in a uh, slider that I can move. Let's see. Uh, vertical slider. Not. So I'm just going to put in the slider and make it do something when it slides. So I'd add an event. Add event case slide. When the value changes. What should I do? Uh, actually, I could just make an indicator here. Create indicator, a new value. But I'm, not, I'm going to demonstrate to demonstrate the thing. Rather than do it right here, I'm going to actually make a, a follow-on action. Create constant uh, update slider. Control copy. Other actions create a case after update slider, and then I'm going to actually use the slider and just write it to here. Get rid of that, and then here's my value of the slider. 
Note again, I can run it directly as is. I don't have to actually launch it any kind of way. It's uh, very easy, and there it works. Let's make it a little bigger. Stop by the stop button. Mm. Pick it up to see. So again, you can do a lot of debugging with uh, an actor directly from this one VI. It can start by itself, and it can stop by itself by using the X arrow. Uh, if you want to look at what's happening, uh, for example, I can look on... Let's put a probe here. Uh, there's a set of custom probes that should install. Uh, it's called the cyclic table probes. And you can use these as like a history probe. So let's start this thing. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that. Zoom in a bit. As I run this, you can see this update slider is coming in. And when I stop this, You see that you get the last action is a shutdown actions and then exit. So uh, basically, yeah, and you can you want to do a lot of your debugging as possible with a new uh, actor or component by itself, not interacting with other things, because once you interact with other things, it gets more complicated. You want 95% of your debugging to go on uh, right like this from one single VI. But at some point, you want to actually use your, uh, your actor uh, in the in uh, related to other actors, sort of launched by some kind of main actor. So let's go back here, and uh, my, here's my blank diagram, which is going to be my uh, top level. I want to actually launch my actor. So what I do is I take one just a constant from this class. That is basically the address of the actor. It represents the actor to the higher level calling code. Now I've decided on my actor. I want to launch it. So we look at under data communication. Messenger library, here's the palettes. And under actors, we have launch. So we put it there and launch. Now, if you run this, hang on, let's get back to there. If I run this, it actually launches and then it stops. I'll do it again so you can see. If you watch the arrow, it launches and stops. And that's by design because as soon as the top level stops, then the actor, which is really owned by the top level, should stop as well. And if you put a probe on the actor, oops, just go away. Go away. And if you put a probe on the actor while I run it, let's see, let's look at the messages actually. If I look in the messages and I put a probe on the messages. Again, I want a custom probe message cyclic table. And while it's running, when I run this, see that it gets the self-initialize and then immediately gets self-auto shut down one millisecond later. So it's, uh, we're not really doing much. So the way to keep it alive is to keep your top level alive. So I'm going to put in some structure to make it stay alive. Just do an event structure. Oops, that's not it. Event structure. And then my, I'm gonna edit it to handle the panel close. Get this card true, create constant. True. That'll keep this alive until I actually close the front panel. So now when I run this, my actor is actually running. Got self initialized. I can actually run it. Why is that stopped? Oh, I know, because of that. Okay. And because uh, there's not a message. And then when I stop this, it will crash. Lovely. <laughs> Really loading all the framework. All right, back where we were. Let's see, do we still have our code in there? Yeah, all right, let's try it. So again, we start it, and it stops. Now we can stop it this way. And as you see, it's it, we haven't actually done any kind of shutdown code here. It's just, we just launched it. We didn't do anything with the actual uh, address, and then we just waited and stopped. You can actually, when you're running, run this one, stop it with a stop arrow, and that will stop the actual actor. Uh, and the actor doesn't just stop dead, it actually receives its shutdown message automatically. I can show that. I'm using a bloody custom probe again. Uh, what it does is uh, the, the actor startup actually uh, configures some messages. It's the one that sends the self initialized message. And it also uh, configures it so that if the caller dies, an auto automatic shutdown message is sent. Let's show that. Let's see. Run this. There's self-initialize. 
And if I stop this actor with a stop button, it receives self auto shutdown. I don't know if you can see that. So it didn't just hard stop, it actually received its shutdown message and go through any kind of shutdown procedure. Okay. So, okay, we've launched it, but we're not doing anything with it. So what do we want to do first? Uh, so let's send in a message. Now the template has some built-in messages, uh, boring ones like the default, which is basically, I don't know what you said. Uh, and the interesting one is show front panel. And um, basically just shows its front panel. So I'm going to take that message, make a copy of the string, go back to the palettes again. Wrong one. Messenger. The send palette, I'm just going to send it a message. And again, the actor object serves as the address of the actor. So you use that in order to send it messages or interact with it. Let's have a string. And these send methods are polymorphic, so there's various ways of uh, using them. I'm just going to send a direct string. Uh, you can either send message objects. If I look at the message objects, there's write message. You can actually write message and add data and stuff, but if you're just the message is just a string, uh, then you can use that directly as a string. And the send will actually create a message with that string and send it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try it again. This time we run it. Now it shows its front panel. Uh, stop it, stop it. So maybe you want to instead, you want to uh, put it in a sub panel. I can show that quickly. Usually my applications, I have actors show themselves in sub panels rather than just showing their uh, uh, front panel directly. So let's use a sub panel. And we will create a reference. Come on. Create a reference to the sub panel. And it's set up so that if you add data to this message and you add a sub panel, the show front panel will know, oh, I'm supposed to show myself in this sub panel. Let me get rid of this thing. We don't need that. Uh, this is an example of rather than doing something with the BI directly, I am sending a message to the actor to tell it what to do. So I'm saying, show your front panel in this sub BI. Let's see if that works. I might give an error because it's already open. Let's see. Nope, there we are. Now it showed in the sub panel, and I can stop it, and it stops. If I don't want to do the sub panel, I'll just take that off, run it again. Now it shows in its own menu, in its own uh, window. Stop it here. Uh, one thing to show about subpanels, if I put it back in its subpanel, uh, this is important for debugging. If you click on a subpanel, right click on a subpanel, you have the option to allow user to open the diagram. This is very useful because when you're running and you want to see what's going on with this thing, you could open block diagram. There is your actor. Uh, you can even stop it and the diagram remains open. So you can put probes on, whatever. Uh, let's put a probe somewhere. Let's do a oh, message probe, yeah. And you, and then you restart it, and then you can see uh, the messages come in. So if you look here, we got self initialize, then show front panel. And when we stop this guy, we get self auto shutdown. You can even see the ref num. That's the uh, sub front. That's the uh, sub uh, sub panel ref num that was in the message. Uh, what else can we do? Okay, now let's say we want to get some data. Say on this front panel our main diagram, we want the information uh, from the uh, the actor. So that there's more ways you could do that. One, you could ask the actor for the information, that's a request reply. But a better way to do it is some kind of sort of register and notify, where you register to receive the information and then receive it by notifications whenever it changes. So let's go back to our actor. I'll open that up. Close that. So what we want to do is we want to publish the slider. So whenever the slider changes, we get update slider. We want to actually publish what the slide information is. So now if you look in the actor, there's something called the observer not not notification registry. This is a special object that keeps track of addresses and the information they are registered to receive. If we look under the palette, just leave this palette open, under observer register, We've got two registration things. One's called state and one's called event. I'll explain that later, but we're just going to use state for now. And just hook it up the information it wants. 
Now, normally, I'll, I'll, then I'm going to give it a name, the name that identifies the information. So I'll give it a string, and I'll call it my slide. Okay. Now this is publishing a message containing my slide called my slide that contains the slide value. Now, how do we actually get that information? Well, we have to send it a registration message from our main VI. So in the main VI, we need to send a registration message, which is this one. And what we want to wear is that again. My slide. We want to register for my slide. Oops. Not for all. We want to register a send registration by label. Register for my slide. Now we need to send, well, where is it going to send the information to? We need to have some kind of message receiving mechanism. So I'm going to build one quickly here. Messengers are the different types of message ways of sending uh, messages. Uh, so basic ones are a queue messenger, which is basically a queue underneath. Event messenger, which is an event, that's what the actor is using, and a notification messenger. So I'm going to use a notifier. Notification messenger. I have to create it. And then I want to wait on notification here. Yeah. Of course, I want to do that in a loop. So I can get many notifications. And let's see. Um, so that will wait for messengers to come to this. I'm going to have this pass this notifier as the observer to register. That means the, the address that will get the messages sent to it, the notifications sent to it. And then I want to read this message. Uh, actually, so extract reads the message. And I'll just take it as a variant. So create uh, indicate. There's a variant. I'll be slide, I guess. So where is that? Oh, there's our slide. Hang on. Right, is that going to work as is? Well, it's not going to stop, is it? Um, then I need to be able to stop this uh, thing, so I'm just going to connect the air or the notifier here. And when this finishes, I think I will hang on, use destroy. Basically, I'm destroying the notifier as its shutdown mechanism. So I need to link this to this. Should that work? Let's see. So uh, we don't want the sub panel. Let's turn it off. So I hit run. There, and you can see the uh, information in the slider. Let me just stop that and make it bigger. Okay, run it again. And again, whenever I change the slide. I'm actually receiving, sending messages. So what has happened here is that when I send the call this, when I send the registration message inside this guy, so let's actually put this on there. So you can see, actually you can see the last message was registered by label. Let's stop this. And then start it. And again you see, I receive the self-initialize, which is the automatic first message. Show front panel, I send it. Registered by label for my slide. Uh, the web face that was handled, you don't really have to worry about it, but if you look inside the actor, uh, there's a little registration VR here, which actually registers uh, for, it handles all registration messages for you. It's kind of like an assistant. So every message that comes in is passed through the registration VI first, uh, which handles all the registration for you. Uh, and then only if it's not a registration message is it passed on uh, to be actually handled uh, by the rest of the actor. Let's, uh, so yeah. So anyway, that's basic. Uh, that's the basic way of uh, creating actors uh, in actual real code. I wouldn't actually construct something like this. This top level. I would actually use an actor as the top level. So the actor itself already has message handling mechanisms to use in place of this notifier and can launch sub actors, register for information, and uh, and uh, get all the information back and and, and so on. Uh, so maybe I will demonstrate that next time. Anyway, this is a short introduction, just showing some things that you can do with Messenger Library. Thank you.